Grade 4 math number 76, multiples and fractions. You remember what multiples are, right? They're the answers in a multiplication problem. For 2 times 3, these are the factors. The answer is the multiple. It's a multiple of 2 or 3 because it's the product, the answer, of a number, 6, and a counting number. So here's the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, and we have 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3 with all these counting numbers. So the multiples are the products. See, 6, 12, 18, 24, etc. These are the multiples of 6. Okay, so keep that in mind. I want you to also remember that we talked about before that a unit fraction has a 1 for a numerator and the denominator tells us how many parts the item was split into. So here's a unit fraction 1 fourth. The 4 tells us it was split into 4 parts and the 1 is the numerator. It's a unit fraction one fourth. Okay? Now I got one more thing I want you to remember from previous videos. In fact, the video right before this one. The identity property of multiplication says that any time a number is multiplied by one, the product stays as the original number. So three times one stays as three. Ninety-nine times one stays as ninety-nine. One million times one stays as one million. Okay? It keeps its identity. Alright, so let's take a look at this circle. We have a circle that was broken into fifths, but one of them is missing. We've got one, two, three, four of them. It shows four fifths. There are four, one, two, three, four, fifth size parts. See that? That's a fifth size part, that's a fifth size part, that's one, and that's one. There's four of them. So each fifth size part is represented as a unit fraction one fifth. Okay? Each one of these four is represented by one-fifth. What we can say is that one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth is equal to four-fifths. Okay? We add the numerator and slide the denominator across. Okay? On a number line, it would look like this. If this was broken into fifths and five-fifths is one, which we've learned before, when the numerator and the denominator are the same, it equals one all, right? We could jump from zero and go one-fifth, two-fifth, three-fifth, four-fifth, okay? And that's how we would count. This would be one times one-fifth, two times one-fifth, three times one-fifth, four times one-fifth. See? We can use unit fractions to four, four, show four-fifths in two ways. We can show it like we just did. Four-fifths is equal to one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth, which is repeated addition. Or, we could say four-fifths is equal to four times the one-fifth. See? One, two, three, four times. Multiplication can show repeated addition. It's the same thing. One-fifth times two would be a one-fifth plus a one-fifth. One-fifth times three would be one-fifth plus one-fifth plus one-fifth. See? It's three times. So four times would be the four times. See? So let's take a look at these. We have three-fourths. Well, that's equal to one-fourth plus one-fourth plus one-fourth. It's also the same as three-fourths times one. That's the identity property working right there. Any number times one stays itself. It stays as three-fourths. It could also be shown as one-fourth times three. See? Three times. See? Seven-fifths can be one-fifth, seven times, you know, added seven times in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And if we added all these one-fifths up, these seven one-fifths up, it would equal seven-fifths. It can also be shown as seven-fifth times one. Identity property. It stays its name. It keeps its name. It's identity. Or we could show it as one-fifth times seven. See? We have one-fifth times seven. Seven times. Two-thirds can be one-third plus one-third. It can be shown as two-thirds times one. Identity property again. It kept its identity as two-thirds. And it can also be shown as one-third times two. One-third, two times. See? So these are all the different ways that it can be represented. We can do repeated um, addition. 
We can multiply it by 1 so it keeps its identity, or we can split it into its unit fraction. Remember, unit fraction is 1 with a denominator. And then multiply it by a counting number that many times. 1 fifth, 7 times. 1 third, 2 times. 1 fourth, 3 times. See? So multiples of fractions are made by increasing the numerator. So I want you to think, because I know in your brain you're like, oh, multiples, then the 3 would be 3, 6, 9 for the denominator. I know that a lot of people are thinking, because their brain wants to go that way, but don't let it. That is very wrong thinking. Multiples of fractions are made by increasing the numerator. Okay? When we increased the 1 third and another 1 third, it became 2 thirds. See? 6 times 2 means we have a 6 2 times, right? 6 plus 6. Here's the multiples of 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, right? So 6 times 2 is 12. These are the multiples. See how a 6 is added each time? So if we did this with fractions, 1 third times 2, if we were to stick with the 6 times 2 kind of rule, it would be 1 third plus 1 third. See, like 6 plus 6. And then we just add the numerator and we get 2 thirds. The denominator did not get touched. See? So the multiples of 1 third are 1 third, 2 thirds, 3 thirds, 4 thirds, 5 thirds. Is that crazy? We didn't touch the denominator at all. The multiples of 1 fourth are 1 fourth, 2 fourth, 3 fourths, 4 fourths, 5 fourths, 6 fourths, etc. And the same thing for 1 seventh. 1 seventh, 2 seventh, 3 seventh, 4 seventh, 5 seventh. See? The numerator is going up, but the denominator is staying the same. Now, I know if your brain is still having trouble under figuring this out, keep thinking about the multiples of 6 and look at this. Knowing that 6 plus 6 is 12, and that's the next multiple of 6, we've got to add the 6 to itself. 1 third plus 1 third is 2 thirds, and that puts us right here, doesn't it? If we said 1 6, we're not growing, we're shrinking. So the 6 cannot be a multiple. It's getting smaller. And if you want to say, oh, 3, 6, 9, 1 ninth is even tinier. It's shrinking even more. So instead of increasing like multiples are supposed to by adding the number to the next number, you're actually making it shrink. So the denominator does not increase. Only the numerator does like this. So don't think the denominator increases for multiples of fractions, okay? It's only the numerator. Remember, only the numerator. Crazy, wacky math. I hope I explained it well enough. I know this can be really mind-boggling. I hope you understood it. I appreciate you watching these videos. As I've said many times before, anyone who's watching YouTube videos for math is obviously trying very, very hard to learn math. You could be watching funny cats, right? But here you are watching multiples and fractions. Keep up the good work. I'm proud of you. Keep going. You can do this. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you, and I'll see you next video. Bye.